So, does Africa have a coup culture? And why is it making a comeback? Are these military coups even about the people? Let's explore this further with Dr. Ndubisi Ani. He's a security analyst. Thank you so much for joining us. Are Africans Thank more you. tolerant of military coups compared to the rest of the world? Um, I wouldn't say that. Um, it is not that um, Africans are tolerant about coup. Africans are well aware about the dangers of having coup and having military officers rule regimes. But then the problem is about what is the last option that is available to civilians and to ordinary people. Um, come to look at it, in the West, for instance, you have a working judiciary, you have a working, working systems where citizens can easily change the trajectory of their life through elections and through um, advocacy and the likes. But then in Africa, you find a situation where the uh, ruling elites are manipulating elections, are man manipulating constitutional uh, review processes to suit their needs. So it becomes um, available that a coup or military coup um, ends up being the avenue where leaders can uh, remove people from power. For instance, when you look at um, all the coups that happened, or even the popular uprisings that happened, the seven popular uprisings that happened in Africa, you see that the action or the inaction of the military is very significant to the success of um, a change uh, in, in government. So one has to look at that in context, that it's not about preference for military coup, it's about the options available. So what do we then say about the recent coups in Guinea and Mali? It began with protest by ordinary people, but it seems they got hijacked by the military. Are they seen as a better alternative to democratically elected leaders, and why? Yeah, so I wouldn't say that they are seen as a better um, alternative. When you look at um, actually the coups and the military coups and the aftermath on the African continent, you see that um, the military regime have even been worse than the regime that we asked So when you look at uh, Omar al-Bashir, for instance, he came uh, following uh, military coup incidences in the region, and then you see him come into power, and then it's a matter of, uh, it became worse than the regime that is there. When you look at the current transitional government in Sudan, uh, the situation is not good in the country. And what happened right now is that the failed coup that happened just recently is about trying to take away the uh, transitional government that is in place. And that was after the military coup, and people thought that there will be safe heavens. And then when you look at Libya, for instance, after the uh, rebel uprising um, and then popular uprising that took out Gaddafi, it was all, the country became worse. Mm. So it's not about the fairness, it's not about the goodness that comes from coup, but people prefer that let there be radical change rather than um, a fake democracy that people have and then think that, okay, there's uh, a, a democracy, freedoms and human rights, but then nothing has been happening in terms of um, progress for civilians. The African Union has outlawed coups. They've suspended several countries and threatened sanctions, but that hasn't prevented more coups from happening. How can the EU and regional bodies deter coups effectively? You're very right. I think that question is very significant in the sense that the African Union and ECOWAS have protocols and at the African Charter, which outlaws coups um, specifically. But then you cannot outlaw coup and then still have the conditions that generate coup and mass grievances. So let's talk about um, constitutional coups and electoral coups. Those are the most um, insidious kind of coups that have enabled the occurrences of um, coup, uh, about the military um, overt coups on the continent. So when you look at it, the um, African Union, for instance, um, says that any constitutional amendment to prevent democratic change um, is unconstitutional change in government. But this happened in Guinea, for instance, but the government, uh, the African Union and ECOWAS did not go into Guinea to say, okay, to say to Alpha Conde, why did you change the constitution to uh, put a clause that will let you be in, the, in power? So those kind of um, 
let's say two phase kind of responses to coups do not um, do not give uh, confidence to the ordinary citizens. So um, the African Union has to ensure that constitutional coups and electoral coups are are kind of banned, and there's no way that that happens. And the leaders stay maximum up to their terms. But it's very important to note that um, staying more than your term is not the so is not the actual problem. Staying more, more than, if you look at Germany, for instance, Angela Merkel has been there for a long term and she has not, and she has ruled accordingly. The problem is about the, uh, the democratic processes, having strong institutions that work, having constitutions that speak to the interests of the citizens rather than constitutions that are made to address the uh, condition or situation of individuals. So that is where the problem is. And the African Union has to thwart those processes and stop backing um, their member states or member countries who uh, change constitutions against the will of the people.